Hi, this is Golf One Zulu Hotel Delta, and this is my 10 minute video on uh, how to use WSJTX. I'm not going to go into the details of settings, there's just too much to go through. Um, I just, it's just to introduce you to the basic operation and what's actually on this screen. We'll start by looking at, well, the mode that the, sorry, the frequency uh, or band that we're going to operate on. I've selected 40 meters for the purposes of the demo. And you'll see here I'm operating mode FT8. To change the mode, I simply go up to mode and select whether I want to do FT4 or FT8. If I select FT4, it changes the frequency. Uh, so sometimes you have to set the frequencies for the different bands and different modes uh, within, the, within the settings. I'm not going to cover that in this video. Right, so we're now in FT4 on 40 meters and we're getting receiving some messages this screen shows us the messages that we're receiving this screen shows us the ones we're receiving for a particular frequency and also also for the ones that we're transmitting what we have on the screen here is the uh, universal time in hours minutes and seconds we've got the um, signal strength in db We've got time difference. Now, this is a time difference between your uh, uh, time on your PC and the time in which you're receiving uh, the message. So there's a time difference here of 0.1 seconds. Anything below uh, a second is good. Uh, when you go into uh, uh, differences of two seconds or more, uh, then it's time to synchronize your uh, PC time. Uh, you might find that it's higher even though yours is, is good. Uh, other people may not be. And all that happens is when you're transmitting, you might be clipping the end of the receiving of a message. So it means that the, you won't receive messages. So best to keep it synchronized. Uh, this is the frequency you're transmitting on in Hertz based on the base frequency of 7.047.5. Here you'll see that we're getting CQs. And the reason I'm getting CQs is because I'm using the CQ only uh, display. If I unclick this, then I'll start to see uh, messages being received and sent as well. And here you've still got the time, signal strength, frequency, uh, sorry, the time difference, the frequency that they're operating on, uh, here is the call sign of a person um, uh, uh, receiving uh, the message, who's sending the message, and uh, the message that they're sending through the QSO to complete. I'm going to select CQ only for the purpose of this exercise, and I'm going to erase uh, by double clicking on there to clear this screen is just a single click to, uh, to clear this one and now we're waiting for the messages to come through again okay so i'm going to want to qso uh, with this one so i double click on it and you change it changes the frequency automatically to the one which they're uh, they're transmitting on and it started the sequence of messages so I've sent one saying, hey, you, it's me and I'm here. They've now responded to me to say, uh, yes, thanks for, for that. And uh, this is the, um, the signal strength I'm getting you on. I was getting them on a plus two. So um, I've sent to them, right, I've received you on a plus two. Now, also on the same frequency, there's another there's a, another person um uh, having a QSO. In fact, this person's having a QSO with two people at the same time. Now, it may mean uh, because uh, Japan's come into Bulgaria um, that they want to speak to Japan rather than just a silly old little England. Uh, so I think that's what's happened on this occasion. He's gone back to Japan first and now he's come back to me, which is fine. I don't have a problem with that if he's trying to get that particular grid square um, and uh, he's already got mine. So that is the QSO complete. What you won't have seen is that it's gone through each stage of these messages, all the relevant ones for that QSO. It's done it on an auto sequence, so it's run through automatically for me. And now it's it's uh, logging that content, uh, that uh, that uh, contact. 
So yeah, all the details are in there. Now, WSJTX has got its own uh, log file. And but if you set up WSJTX correctly, it, you can also communicate. You can also send that um, uh, that log file uh, to log record into your logger as well. I've got um, Ham Radio Deluxe and I log all my QSOs automatically into it. So as soon as I click that button, it goes off to uh, uh, create the entry in, in, in HRD. OK. Now, other things that we've got below here, this is the uh, the volume uh, that I'm getting uh, through the sound card. Um, this is the TX uh, frequency, the RX frequency. I can operate split operation if I want to. Um, and I say I've got it all set to auto sequence. Uh, I can hold the transmit frequency if I want to continue to, to stay on the same frequency for that. Um, and I do use that from time to time. Uh, on the colors, if you go to view, color highlighting scheme, it gives you the legends of the different colors. You'll see here the light brown one is a new grid. So I'm chasing those at the moment. Um, the blue ones are just a new call and uh, the light blue ones are a new call on band. But also greens are a new ITU zone, um, and these purple ones are a new uh, a DXCCC. Uh, we've got new continents here as well, etc. So if you see it for the first time, you're going to see more of these bright colours than the, than the uh, uh, not so bright ones. You can choose to, uh, which ones you want to actually see by going up to File, Settings, and Colours. You can switch on and off. Um, the highlighting that you want. I've got on here that I don't want to see every Q, uh, uh, CQ. I don't want it in green. Um, I'm not chasing call signs at the moment. Uh, I'm just purely chasing grids, etc. Okay. Uh, if you want to go and have a look at the log file, I just go into File, Open Log Directory. It opens up into uh, a file explorer. And if you scroll down, you'll see uh, wsjtx.log. And if you double click on that, it should open uh, Notepad for you. And then with Notepad, it will show you uh, at the bottom uh, the last uh, QSO that you've made. OK, so let's do another QSO. I'm going to uh, erase this. I'm going to change my mode to FT8. I'm going to go to uh, to, uh, to uh, 20 meters and I'm going to uh, just wait and receive a, a call a um, uh, some more messages. Remember, there are 15 seconds uh, on uh, FT8 and I think there are about seven seconds uh, on um, uh, on FT4. Now, um, uh, so just very quickly on these buttons, um, if for some reason I want to log a QSO that's not been completed, um, I can actually on here uh, go and, and complete the form manually myself. Don't typically do that. Uh, monitor means I can switch on whether I'm actually receiving uh, messages or not. So if that's not in green, then it's not going to be um, uh, decoding messages. Erases to clear the screens. Um, decode shows whether the messages are being decoded or not. Um, uh, if that goes into uh, blue and it stays on blue, you're probably better off uh, just closing down WSJTX and, and open it again. Um, I've got to enable TX here, so if I'm doing a, a CQ, then uh, once I've decided on the, the frequency that I'm going to choose, uh, I can then go to uh, enable TX, and as long as I've selected it's a, a CQ that I'm sending, um, it'll wait to uh, the right time to do it, and then it will send that, um, at that CQ. And then people will start to uh, respond to me appropriately and it will populate these messages, uh, the message screen appropriately on here and it will go through the sequence for you automatically. 
Right, so that's my 10 minutes up. I uh, hope that's a good start. As I say, I've not covered absolutely everything on the video, but I hope it's a good help. Uh, again, everything that's in here um, is what you'll find in the manual anyway. And I'm sure there's plenty of other videos that cover very similar things, but I hope you find this useful. Okay, 7-3 for now and hope to catch you on the band sometime.